Thank you, Simone. Thanks for inviting me. It's, uh, it's very nice to be here for this uh, workshop week. Um, so, so first of all, I apologize with some of you if you already seen the first um, part of my talk. The first part of my talk will be, I, I, I try to do like a smooth review of the algebraic approach to duality. Then I show you a couple of examples, one that is classical and the other one that is a joint work in progress with uh, Christian Jardina and Ruben Frasek, both in, uh, in Modena. Okay, so let's start um, with, the, with the motivation. Uh, so the motivation comes from non-equilibrium statistical mechanics when the idea is that you wanna create a, a system that can be a, an easy system, like a toy model for uh, non-equilibrium. And the classical ways to do that are two. One where you have, you see you have a bulk here. This is my bulk that goes, it's a one dimensional uh, finite chain where you have for example, particles. So my, uh, my main interest is particle system, but I will, I will uh, show you other example in different contexts. And then you add two external reservoirs inside at the end point of the bulk. And this reservoir, they, they can add or uh, um, take particles from the bulk. So they, they create a birth and that process. And in this way, depending on the value of the parameter alpha, beta, gamma, and delta, you can create a flux of particle in your bulk. This uh, setup is the one I will be focused on this talk. However, uh, also regarding particle, you, you can also put your particle in a closed system or even in, in Z. And then you create a flux by giving different rate from jumping left or right. So if, you, if your particle have a preference in jumping to the right, there you, you can have a sort of drift in the, in the bug. Okay. Uh, so the, so you, this is the picture you should have in mind, an open process. This is called open in the sense that you see you have this reservoir that interact uh, with the end point of the bulk. Um, the technique that I will introduce actually also work for asymmetric system and even uh, uh, multi-species one that are now a hot topic in the particle system community. The goal in this, uh, in this open, uh, open context is to characterize the non-equilibrium stationary measure. So as T goes to infinity, what happened to, to the system? Okay. Uh, as I was mentioning, uh, interacting particle system is the, let's say the focus uh, of my research, but then um, this duality te te technique also applied to Marco diffusion, energy redistribution model in the spirit of the Kipnis Marchioro Presutti model that I will explain uh, uh, in a second, uh, population genetics, of which are uh, yeah, expert, and uh, also stochastic chemical reaction network. This is uh, also, in principle, a work in progress. Um, and as I was saying, so for particle system or in general for other model, the idea of having the res the, this reservoir is that uh, you break the conservation law because all these models, they conserve one or more uh, quantity. So it can be the, the, the number of particles, it can be the total energy of the system, the total momentum. And having this reservoir, you, you break this, this conservation. Um, and after break it, so, so, before, so if your reservoir are, are in uh, the same, uh, um, with the same parameter, then the stationary, you are in equilibrium. And when you are in equilibrium, everything is easy because the, it's easy to characterize the stationary measure because it's product and it is reversible. So the, the computation you have to do is just that you prove the generator is self-adjoint with respect to the measure. And that's something easy to do. But when you are in non-equilibrium, then everything, uh, and nothing more because the, you can prove that, I mean, you have a measure that is non-product. It's hard to, to, to characterize in the sense that uh, there are very few models for which you can say everything about this measure. And the, the first one that uh, come to my mind is the simple symmetric exclusion process. That one is considered exactly solvable, integrable. Uh, you, you can say everything about this non-equilibrium um, stationary measure. Okay, but for other model, we only have very few informations and this is thanks to duality. Okay, so uh, just a, a slide regarding the definition of duality, but uh, maybe it was not necessary, but so we are on the same page. Uh, in this talk, this definition regarding the expectation and the one of generator are the same because these technical details uh, are satisfied. But so what do we need? to have a duality relation, mainly three ingredients. We start, so there are two Markov processes in the, in the picture. 
one is z, one is xi, one is the initial process that in principle is something uh, you are interested, and the dual one is the xi. And they are connected via an observable of the two processes. There is the duality function that goes from the, the, the product of the state space of the, pro of the processes into R, such, such that for at every time, every um, non-negative time, this identity holds. And this identity has to be read in the following way. You have the expectation of the duality function as a function of the first variable. So the randomness is here. And this process Z at time zero has this distribution. And the, on the right hand side, you have the expectation of the duality function as a function of the, of the second process. Um, clearly, this is true for uh, t equal to zero, but then it, it's true for every t. However, if you want to prove a duality relation, sometimes this is kind of hard to check, and you can go at the level of the Markov generator. So here, L and the dual are the Markov generator of respectively z and xi. And the duality is the following. So the action of your Markov generator on the duality function on the first variable, so now xi, it's a constant, is the same as the action of the dual, the, the Markov generator of the dual process on the duality function as a function on, of the second variable. And how you prove this? Well, the first idea is that you, you perform a direct computation and you check that they are, uh, they are the same. Um, and this works in, in some cases, the, the computation can be, easy, but sometimes they are impossible. And then you have to come up with some other idea on how to prove uh, this relation. This is where the algebraic approach uh, jumps in. Um, regarding, up, so the algebraic approach, only it's only for um, the question of finding duality relations. Of course, it's also interesting to have some uh, nice applications of the, of the duality relation. And, uh, classical application are in the uh, context of the hydrodynamic limit by De Masi and Presutti, the scaling to KPZ, I just put some name, by Borodin, Sasamoto, Ivan Corwin, and population genetic, Ingman, and, and Sigmund. Um, and there are even more recent development in, uh, in other areas. These are the, the classical one. Okay, so this is, the, this is the, the relation we will work with. Okay, so in a nutshell, the algebraic approach says uh, um, two things, and for now these are just words. Um, there is a, let's say there is a recipe for, for duality. So you can always uh, see duality as a, an intertwined relation between two different representations of an abstract uh, algebra. And this is what I will show you today. On the other hand, there are other techniques regarding just self-duality. So when the dual process is an independent copy of your initial process that relies on the reversibility of, uh, of your process. Um, so since self-duality is a special case of duality, you can always see this second item with the, with the two different representation, but not vice versa. Um, and today I will only show you duality relation, not, not self-duality one. Okay, so how, so, so this is very abstract. So how does this work? I put, um, okay, uh, this is just to say that there are, um, this was done in uh, starting from the nineties, the, from some pioneers work of Gunther Schutz, where he was the first one to realize this connection with algebra and uh, the duality relation, Markov processes. And then it was applied um, even recently to study, as I would mention even, multi-species uh, um, particle system. Um, okay, the, so the, the first example that I wanna, I wanna show you is actually taken from, uh, from um, population genetics. It's a, a very easy and classical example. It's the, the duality between the wright fischer diffusion and the kim van coalescent that we also see on, on the talk on Tuesday. Uh, so the idea is that you have the mark, you start with the Markov generator, this is the, the wright fischer diffusion. It's basically this uh, Brownian motion with a genetic drift, and you see that zero and one are, uh, are traps. And this is the initial process. So this is the one you wanna study. And then uh, we all know it's dual to this coalescence. So, you, so this is described uh, the evolution of a population of size N, where you select uh, out of N, you select two individual and one uh, dies and the other one uh, survive. Um, and so this one is a pure death process. At some point, 
after some step, there will only be one uh, uh, survival. And here you have your moment duality function. So we all know that if you apply the generator of the right fish in the duality function, that it's equal of considering the action of the generator of the Kingman coalescent in, the duality, in this moment duality function. And this is one line computation. But I thought this was um, a powerful example to show you how to frame this into the algebraic um, into the algebraic approach, because then if you see it from here, then in, in when you go to particle system, it's more or less the, the same ideas, let's say. So the idea is that uh, you come up with an algebra, and uh, which is an abstract object generated by some operators, in this case, A and A dagger, which satisfy some uh, bracket uh, commutator relation. So this is the uh, commutator. So this is A, A dagger minus A dagger A. So at this point, everything is not, it's, uh, let's say it's abstract. So you have this algebra and then this algebra, they have classical uh, representation you can, uh, you can find. Uh, the continuous one, is the, is the representation where the A and the A dagger, I write them here in capital curly A and capital curly A dagger are the derivative and the multiplication. And if you check the commutator here, this should give you exactly the identity. Similarly, there are also a representation on discrete function from the natural number to R and A and the dagger are known as the um, annihilator operator so here you take your function G, you evaluate it in N minus one, multiply by N and the creator operator. So you increase the, the N by one. And again, if you check the commutator later of this uh, capital uh, A and A dagger, they should be the one of the Eisenberg algebra up to a sign. So what is the point? Why do, would we come up with this? The point is that uh, first of all, these objects, these um, operators are easier to study than the whole Markov generator. And the idea is that you can just study the commutation, the, pardon, sorry, the, um, um, the intertwining, so the, even the duality relation between these A's at the level of the algebra instead of the Markov generator of the process. And then you use these A's, these algebra generators as building blocks to write down the Markov generator in the following way. So it's here, it's these two lines. So one can check that the right Fisher diffusion can be written with the curly A's. So in, this, in the following way, so using the continuous representation. Similarly, the Kingman's coalescent generator can be written using the discrete representation, the one with the capital straight A's. And you see that uh, this combination, it's just the inverse of this one. So once you have the first one, you can backwardly write the other one. And then it's a general uh, theorem, it's a general statement that if you have, let's say duality at the level of the generator of the algebra of the A's, you can extend this at the level of the Markov generator. And so you have a duality relation between processes. What can go wrong? Many things, in fact. One is that when you come up, let's say with the right combination of your algebra generator for the first process or for the right fissure, and you backward, backwardly write the other one, then the second one might not be a Markov process. And this happens. And so, yes, in a sense, you have a duality relation between a Markov generator that describes the, the evolution of a process and adjust an operator that it doesn't have any physical uh, interpretation. So that, that, can be, that can happen, it can be a problem. Um, okay, also you may wonder, okay, how do you come up with this special combination? This is not straightforward. For the right Fisher and the King one coalescent, you can just write it down looking at the representation of the algebra, but in general, it's not easy to find the right combination of this abstract operator that gives you the, 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 the generator of the process. Um, so the, anyway, so the, the take home message is that you reduce everything at the level of the abstract algebra. And then there you can work out a bit the, the, the computation and in general, they are easier. 
And then immediately, if you are, if you, if you are lacking and if the dual operator is actually a, a generator, then you have a, a duality relation between Markov processes without any computation at the level of the, of the process generator. And in general, this is true. So any word, any specific combination of a word, if you look at the reverse in the, uh, in the other representation, gives you a, a duality relation between these two operators. Okay, yes. So no, we don't have uh, any theory. It's just, at least to me right now, it's just by chance that you actually have a mark. So in, in, the, in the following example that I have for, uh, for particle system, so there are two famous particle system, one the, is the exclusion process. And let's say the fermionic counterpart is the inclusion process. And for uh, inclusion process, this technique works. What I can tell you is that it's for exclusion, you do it, what you have as a dual, it's, it cannot be a diffusion because the diffusive matrix is not uh, positive. So it's not semi, uh, yeah, positive definite. So you have something, but you don't have any, it's not a, it's not a, a process. Um, I'm trying to think of other examples. Also in a chemical reaction network, we, it's kind of easy to come up with this uh, combination using the Heisenberg algebra, but then the dual, it's not something, doesn't describe a chemical reaction network because you have there, you have, for example, negative objects that are outside the diagonal. So it's not a rate matrix for uh, that describe the, the rate of the process in this sense. Um, yeah. Okay. So let's start with the, the first process that uh, was um, was introduced as the Brownian energy process. We, we studied with an open boundary. So, okay, again, in this setting of having uh, something in the bulk and then two reservoirs. Here, the reservoir have parameter T minus and T plus. And the role of the reservoir is exactly to keep this, the temperature fixed at the end point so that there is a flux of energy in the bulk. And what does this process do? It's a, it's a diffusion process. So this is the diffusive term, this is the drift. And for each uh, bond, each near, nearest neighbor sites, the, there is an immediate exchange of energy among the, among the sites. Um, if T minus and T plus are different, you are in non-equilibrium. If T plus and T minus are the same, you are in, in, in an equilibrium setting and there the, um, the, 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 the stationary measure is reversible and it's the gamma uh, distribution of parameter T, the parameter of the reservoir and S, this parameter here. Um, Z is, the, is your process, it takes value in uh, R plus because it describes the energy. So ZX is the energy at site uh, X. Um, so, so this process was uh, introduced in the context of uh, non-equilibrium statistical mechanics by um, Giardina and, uh, and Redick. Um, it was, so they realized that uh, it was related to another very uh, famous model in the same context known by the kitnis marchioro presutti model, which was introduced by kitnis marchioro and Presutti in 82. And the relation between these two processes is the following. So you have to set this parameter S equal to one half. The intuition of S, I think it's more clear in the, in the particle system, but now you can think of S as a parameter that label your family. So in fact, here you have a family of Brownian energy process labeled by the parameter S. We have as many as you want and S is, uh, is strictly positive. You perform, so you set S equal to one half, you perform an instantaneous limit, thermalization limit, which is the following. So you compute the distribution of the ratio of energy in one site with respect to the bond. So Zx is the energy at site X, ratio the total energy of the bond, conditioning to the fact that the energy of the bond has to be a constant. So you don't change that. If you do that, you find out that this random variable has a uniform distribution, continuous uniform distribution between zero and two. And then you do the following. Then you redistribute energy according to this P. So it's a uniform between uh, zero and one. So just to be more clear, so this is the KMP model. 
So what do you do here? You have, so Z again is the, uh, is the same, so it's the energy per site, but this is not a diffusion, it's a redistribute, you redistribute the energy in a sense. So you take the energy of the bond, XX plus one, so the total energy of the bond is ZX plus ZX plus one, and you put a fraction P in site X and uh, the remaining, the fraction one minus P in, in site X plus one. And this P is a uniform between zero and one. And then you attach this, uh, this reservoir that allows you to have reversibility again for T minus equal to T plus. And here, the, um, again, the reversible measure is the gamma uh, of parameter S equal to one half and T. So it's an exponential, uh, it's an exponential reversible measure, product, homogeneous product, uh, reversible measure. Um, so, so the idea is, so it's the following. So the new configuration has energy Z prime X, which is this, is the fraction P of the total energy of the bond. And then in X plus one, the new energy of the site uh, X plus one is Z prime X plus one, which is the remaining fraction. So this is that. So this one I think was one of the first model, probably the first model introduced in uh, to study the, the non-equilibrium in, uh, in this setting. Okay, so, the, so we have the Brownian energy, the Kipnis Marchioro Presuti, and now we go to the particle system. So for particle system, um, the, one, the, the, one, the particle system related to these two models and related in a way, again, in the sense of the algebra, in the sense that we can describe all these models using the same algebra, not the Eisenberg algebra, but uh, the su one one Lie algebra, which I will tell you what it is in a second is the inclusion process. Again, the inclusion process is, a, so it's, it's a particle system. You are in the usual setting. So you have a bulk where particle jumps on the bulk and then you attach left and right reservoir which model the dynamic and which interact with the end point of the bulk. The S, you can think of it as a, in this case, you can think of it as a spin. It labels the family of uh, inclusion, uh, inclusion processes. Um, in a sense, so now Xi is your process. Xi X denotes the number of particles in uh, site X. So now it's a, it's a number in, uh, in, N, uh, in the natural number, including zero. Um, the main difference with, the, let's say, scasing the exclusion process is that for exclusion, you only have a fixed number of particles per site, in particular up to one particle. So a site can be either empty or full only. Here, you can have as many particles as you want per site. So this is resemble a bit the, the, the zero range processes where there is no restriction in the number of particles. Uh, and it was interesting because as this parameter going to zero, what is this parameter going to zero? So if you compute the product here, you, you find two S psi X plus the product of the number of particles in site X and site X plus one. So the first two S, two S times psi X, in a sense, is the zero range part of the rate because it only depends on how many particles you have uh, when you jump. So zero range processes are, uh, they are, they, perform a jump only depending on how many particles you have at the departure side. They don't care about how many particles you have on the arrival side. So basically you ignore how many particles you have on the departure side. So you look only how many particles you have on the arrival and you see that more particles you have on the arrival side, more likely you will be to jump. This justifies the name inclusion. And in particular, you see as S going to zero, you see this condensation phenomena, meaning you see Many many particles all on the same sites. Yes. So yeah. So part. So this guy, this bulk, will be the dual. Okay. But this open, let's call it open inclusion process, and the Brownian energy process, they will have the same dual, which is the pure absorbing inclusion process. So I hope it will become clear enough. So, so for now, these are just three models that I can describe with the same algebra. And so that's what, uh, the question means also that this particle system and the mass distribution process before they are also in dual degradation. In dual, yes, via, via, some, via some thermalization limit, uh, yes. Okay. 
okay, but yeah. it's not the focus of uh, what you want to look at. And the, the, the interest will not be in the relation, the battery relation between these two processes, but a battery relation between these processes and another one. And another one, but which is very close to this one, to the particle system. So what is what, so the fact is that the, having a dual process, there is a particle system. For diffusion, it's easier because there you have particles. And in particular, we will see the dual is a pure absorbing process. So it, things are very, even easier uh, in principle to study. Um, so just one last comment. So here the reservoir, for example, to the left, what does it do? It inject particle inside one. So this notation, it says that you take a particle from side zero and you put it in uh, site one with the following rate. So the parameter here are alpha L and theta L. And then you can uh, uh, take a particle from site one and you put it in the reservoir. And right, it's similar with uh, parameter alpha R and theta R. Again, if all these parameters are the same, that you are in equilibrium and the, the, the stationary measure is, uh, um, is reversible, is product, and it's a negative binomial of parameter uh, 2s and, uh, and p, which is free. It's between zero and one, but doesn't appear in the, in the generator. Okay, so we have this, uh, this initial open processes because so the point is that the initial process is always an open process. So where reservoir interact actively with the bark. And now we have to come up with an algebra. And in this context, all these models are connected via the Lie algebra SU11. So similarly to the Heisenberg algebra, there are generators. In, the case, in this case, it's not two, but they are three, K0, K plus, and K minus. They satisfy some uh, Lie bracket uh, commutation relation, which are the following. And again, up to here, everything is uh, abstract, so you have a Lie algebra, you have some commutator, and then there are some classical representation of, uh, of the Lie algebra, the continuous, um, sorry, I, this is the continuous one, sorry. So the continuous one, which it's, if you remember the, um, the Heisenberg one, it's again multiplication, then it's more complicated. It's not, it's not just derivative, but it's multiplication second derivative plus two S first derivative. And then this is the number operator because it doesn't change the degree because you multiply, but then you derive. So this one is the number operator. This, this you can think of again of creation, annihilation in a sense. So this is the continuous one. And this is the discrete one. It acts on function psi. So psi here is a number, it's a discrete number, while z here it's a continuous uh, variable. Again, here this is creation because you see I. Um, add one in the function with some, uh, let's call it some rate. This one is the same as the Heisenberg one because I remove one times and I multiply by like psi. And then psi zero, it's the following. So I don't, again, this is number and the number operator, I don't change the value inside my function. And now the point is that we can forget about all this generator, so we don't have to do any computation with L of the inclusion, for example, of or the Brownian energy process, but we just look at the representation. And we ask ourselves, okay, can I impose, for example, a function D that is unknown such that it's an intertwining between the K plus, the K minus, and the K zero? Of course, it has to be consistent in the sense the same function has to satisfy all three uh, intertwining relations. And the, so the answer is yes. Uh, okay, the answer is, is yes, and it will become in the next slide. Uh, but the point is that, okay, as before with the, uh, with, the, with the example of the Wright Fisher and the, and the King one coalescent, we have to write our Markov generators using these building blocks. So this, the discrete representation will be for the inclusion process. So psi is a number in N, and uh, the continuous representation will be for the Brownian energy process. And again, you can come up with a special combination of these ab abstract elements such that when you plug in the two different representations, you recover the Markov processes. And at this point, you are done because you can forget about the, the L, the, the Markov generator, and you can just work at the level of the algebra using these building blocks. So this is the relation using the building blocks. 
Now you may wonder how this is fine. Um, it's not by chance that it's this one. Again, it's, it's somehow the algebra that suggests what is the right uh, combination. But if, if you believe this, then you have uh, used in the discrete representation, you have exactly the bulk of the inclusion process. So this is exactly the exclusion process. And if you use the continuous representation, you have the bulk of the Brownian energy process, the, the diffusion one. This works for the bulk. Uh, and so what are the, these intertwining functions that connect the two different representation of the uh, SU11 algebra? Well, one is resemble the one of the, of the moment duality. So this is basically a moment duality renormalized with this gamma. But it's interesting to see that the, the normalization does not depend on the Z. So it's just a variable of the dual process. So in a sense, it, it's basically a, a moment duality function. And the other one, it's a bit more, more com, seems more complicated because it's, um, it's an hypergeometric function, a 1F1 function, which is nothing but uh, the Laguerre polynomial of degree n variable y should be z, sorry, variable, okay, no, I change notation, variable y and a parameter to s. In the, in the literature, they are called generalized Laguerre polynomial. Um, of course, when you have two representation, you, I mean, I mean, you already, if you find one intertwining function, it's, you, you should be happy, but then you can change representation. And in fact, Laguerre polynomial, you have to change the discrete representation. You pair this one with the continuous representation and you realize that in, in that case, the intertwining function are the Laguerre polynomials. And these representation are just the equation, the, for example, the three terms recurrent relation, the dif differential uh, equation that Laguerre polynomial satisfies. So they are just a representation of the SU11 algebra. Um, you may wonder if there are other representation such that you can find different duality function for your, uh, for your Markov processing. And it has been proved that uh, at least for the BEP and SIP, these two in this symmetric context are the only one possible in product structure. I should stress that these are all in product structure, product over the lattice size. We have no clue how to find duality function that are not on a product structure, but it's also true that then if you have a duality function that is not in, under this product structure, then it's, I mean, application are, uh, we don't know what to do with it because then it would be too complicated to, to find any, any application. Okay. So, so far the, the take home message is that we have this, nice example of a Brownian energy process and symmetric inclusion process that are dual in the bulk. But then my initial claim was that I was interested in, in a, a setting with some bulk and some reservoir. So how do we do with the, with the, with the reservoir? Okay. Okay, so now uh, the, the point is that you can extend, if you have a duality relation in the bulk, you can extend it to the reservoir. Um, about the reservoir, there is nothing exotic, nothing complicated, because there is just a straightforward computation between the left and, uh, and right reservoir. But then it's easy because you just have to look at, let's say, this bond, 0, 1. From 1 to n, you are good with the algebraic approach. And then you just do this computation. And similarly, you do this computation. Um, if, uh, uh, okay, okay, what is surprising is that um, both the open inclusion process, so the one with has, which has also reservoir injecting particle, and the Brownian energy process have the same dual with a different duality function. So this one is the, for the Brownian energy process. Um, but with the same dual process. And the same dual process is this guy. LCIP dual, which is again, it's a, a inclusion process in the bulk, and then it has only absorbing reservoir. So this is a T goes to infinity is a pure death process in a sense, because all the particle will be injected at some time for sure. Because once they are, they, they jump into the left or the right reservoir, they stay there forever. And this is in a sense, the simplification of the dual process. So the bulk, will be completely empty at some point. So 
for xi x, for x from one to n, it will be equal to zero. So you see this, uh, this duality function basically will be product of one or constant. So all the randomness goes here inside zero and site n. Uh, okay, some remark about this result. Okay, so the, the dual process, in a sense, I told you that in the, in the initial process, when you have reservoir, you destroy the, conserv the number of particles, the conservation of particles. But the, the interpretation of the dual process, actually it's different because the dual process conserve the number of particles because their site zero and n and n plus one, when you have the reservoir, then your process is well defined there, your dual process, unlike the initial process. So the number of, so the number of particles is conserved. You just see particle jumping to the left and to the right reservoir. Uh, for the kipnis marchioro presutti model, then once you have, let's say, the duality between BEP, open Brownian energy process and absorbing SIP, you perform a thermalization limit and you immediately have a duality relation for the kipnis marchioro presutti process. And this would be the uh, thermalized inclusion process. And again, the moment duality function, the normalized moment duality function is not unique because it has been extended also at the level of the orthogonal duality. So you can have a duality function, which is product of Laguerre polynomial in the bulk, and then there's some this similar structure in the boundary. Yes. So I think so. I think the two representations that I showed, the discrete one, they are related by a symmetry um, operation. So you can find that one. Um, so they are, they are, in a sense, they are different, but they, you can recover one from the other. Because if you see. Yes, but you see, so no, I, I, I'm not sure oh. if, or if you find one, you should, I am happy if I find at least one. Um, so duality function is always non-unique up to a constant or up to constant of the motion. But here in sense, these two duality functions, they are deeply different. No, they are the same. So in this, in this, I always have BP and SIP, which are fixed. Exactly. One of the representation changes. And when you change one representation, you have hope to find a different duality function. But these two repre <laughs> um, But okay, but there is something. So if you look at this representation, you see K minus is the same. K zero, it's, this is the old, like the old one minus the K minus here. So they are somehow related by some, uh, some map, which maybe also relates the duality function via the same map, but then I, I'm not sure, but yeah. So you change, you keep fixed, for example, the, the continuous representation, you find somehow uh, another one, and then you hope for a different duality function. Yes. There are more questions. Okay, how much? Uh, ah, <laughs> no, no. Okay, um, okay. So we were here. Um, so why I claim that uh, so duality is useful because there is a classical theorem that tells you that you can relate the stationary equilibrium of non-equilibrium uh, moments of uh, um, of of your initial process with respect to this. Absor absorbing particle of the dual process. So we were here. So the point is that you just have to compute the absorption probability of these guys. If you can do that, then you can. So in the past, this was called exactly solvability of the model. For exclusion process, you can do it. For this process, we can have information up to the uh, second, let's say up to the two point correlations. And the question is, can we go further? So this is in two words, I say that the, the recent result is that we cannot go further with this model, with inclusion process and uh, Brownian energy process, but uh, we can come up with 
models that are actually integrable. And integrable means several things for uh, um, several different communities. So for, uh, let's say in this context, integrable, integrable means that at the level of the stationary measure, you can describe all the correlations. I think the most, uh, the, the definition that is more accepted is the one that actually not at the level of the stationarity, but for any time T, you can describe the transition probability of your dual, of, of your model, which can be the dual or the, or the initial one. So in this big set of SU11 algebra, this is BC, BEP and SIP, this duality, KMP and SIP. Also BEP and SIP are related to Wright, Fisher and Moran, but I didn't have time to, to, to show you that. Okay, but now what are these integrable models? These are very similar to the kipnis marchioro presutti model. And this is why I wanted to introduce the kipnis marchioro presutti model. Again, again, you redistribute energy between nearest neighbor uh, sites. So in the bond X, X plus one, you put a fraction alpha so you subtract a fraction alpha to side x and you place this inside um, x plus one. And this, so, in a, so the, the, the redistribution rule is the following. You take a beta, a degenerate beta, zero one, and you place a fraction, you, you subtract a fraction from site x and you place it in, the, in site one. So this is in an open context because you also have reservoir with same parameter, t, pl t plus and t minus. And then again, magic, you can show duality and the dual process is a pure absorbing particle system, which is very similar to the, to the inclusion process in a sense. It's just that here there is no dependence on the arrival side. So this is a zero range type process because the rate to go from a configuration to another only depends on how many, num how many particles you have on the uh, departure side. And you move K particle with rate one over K. So you will see every now, so it's more likely to move very few particles, but sometimes you will see piles of particles move, move in an array that is the inverse of the number of particles. And again, you see here the, the, the left reservoir, you only subtract particle from site one and you place it in site zero. So this is a pure death process. Uh, okay, let me skip this. Okay, so now equilibrium and non-equilibrium here, we can go further. We, we, don't, we don't have to stop at the one or two point correlation because there is an explicit formula that characterizes, you see this, again, this normalized moment, because here you have to look at, so this is basically the duality function of this. And the duality function is the same. And with the same representation, we can describe these new processes. What changes is the combination of this, uh, uh, of this uh, algebra, operators, it's, it's not just the, the one that I show you for B, P, and C, it's more complicated. And so here you can compute, okay, I just show you the result, you can compute the first moment, second moment, and so on. The covariances, okay, one remark that it's uh, only formal, but it's uh, somehow surprising in that this, it seems that they have the same structure for the exclusion process up to a sign, because their exclusion process has a negative correlation, and here we have uh, positive, uh, positive correlations. So take home message summary for the non-integrable model. What you could say about the correlation with respect to the stationary measure is that they have this polynomial form in the parameter of the reservoir. So if you look at the endpoint correlation would be a polynomial in N of T plus and T minus times some, some function. And it was conjectured that for the one dimensional chain, this function, the order of decay is this one over N to the number of the point correlation you are looking at. So they, they go to zero in this way. And this, we could actually check it for the integrable model because we have a precise uh, formula. Okay, I am done. Thank you so much for attention.